There's somebody else you'd want to save you out, out of a building, and that's Florida Congressman, <laughs> uh, GOP Congressman Michael Waltz. He's a member of the House Armed Services Committee. He's also a National Guard colonel. He commanded a U.S. Army Special Forces unit with multiple deployments in Afghanistan. Congressman, it's always great. Green Beret. Yep, that's right. Green Beret. That's 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 awesome. Um, and we want to thank you thank for coming you. on the show this morning. Thanks, Rachel. Um, so much to talk to you about. We had you on your on our podcast, Sean and I, last week. Um, that was before um, the, the, the 13 Marines uh, passed away in that suicide bombing. So much has happened. Um, and just this weekend, uh, we had President Biden send out a tweet that a lot of people are saying was very tone deaf. Here's a tweet I want to get your reaction on the other side. It says, to the courageous Afghans arriving in America, welcome home. Um, this was, by the way, as he took off on vacation um, to Delaware. Congressman? Well, the evacuation's not over, right. Mr. President. There's still Americans stuck, uh, SIV holders, uh, a, a green card holders, that right now, as we speak, veterans groups are still trying to help get out. They're trapped at airports, in the vicinity of airports around uh, Afghanistan. You know why? Because the State Department won't give the proper clearances for these private charter flights to get out. Uh, and in the few instances where they have, then the Taliban won't let them go. You know what that's called? That's called a hostage. Right. Uh, and we are heading into a mass hostage situation where the Taliban has all the leverage to get international legitimacy, access to billions in foreign uh, currency, and economic assistance. And we handed them that legitimacy on a silver platter in the form of hundreds of Americans that Joe Biden left behind. Real quickly. It's, it's unforgivable and it's, un it's unconscionable. And, and the other piece is, this war isn't over. Uh, it's now been extended. Uh, Al Qaeda is going to come roaring back. Uh, General Milley uh, said mm. that just yesterday that it's not a matter of if, but when. So that means we're still going to have to deal with this either in the homeland or when U.S. Uh, troops have to go back. Congress, my apologies for interrupting, but I, I want to dig deeper. Why isn't the State Department given access? For, for, for private charters to come there and do the job. We understand that they're not going to go get our people. Okay, we've accepted that. There's people that are special forces going back in to go get our people. Why aren't they granting them access to depart? You know, it's really unclear. I think they really want to focus on this pathway with the Taliban uh, reopening Kabul International Airport and then uh, working through countries like Qatar uh, because we have no diplomatic presence, we have no troop presence now to help people get out. Uh, you know, these countries where these planes will land just want assurance that the State Department's going to take care of the issue, these plane loads of people, uh, when they land. So they have to proactively engage and give that assurance, and then they have to inform the Taliban these planes are cleared to land. Uh, so it's a multiple-step process, but the wow. State Department should be working in concert with these groups. Uh, they should be working in a public-private partnership with them. These are chartered flights that donors have stepped up, veterans are coordinating, uh, my congressional offices are helping with, uh, and this should, be a, this should be a cooperative, collaborative effort. Instead, we're having to fight through our own government to get Americans out. Wow. Yeah, you've heard that report from numerous sources that the State Department has actively stepped in the way of these private groups exfiling people from Afghanistan. You brought this up just a moment ago, Congressman. You brought up you know, uh, General Milley and his prediction that we're going to see a resurgence in terror, that this war is not over. Let's listen to what he had to say really quickly. Is the U.S. safer today since the U.S. has withdrawn from Afghanistan? Well, you know, this is something that um, I've thought a lot about. Um, and, and I personally think that my military estimate is, is that the conditions are uh, likely to develop. Uh, of a civil war. I, do, I don't know if the Taliban is going to be able to consolidate power and establish governance. They may be, maybe not. Uh, but I think there's at least a, a very good probability uh, of a broader civil war. And that will then in turn lead to conditions that could, in fact, lead to a reconstitution of Al Qaeda or a growth of ISIS or other myriad of terrorist groups. So I think the, the short answer to your question is uh, we don't know yet, but. The conditions are very likely, in my opinion, that, and I've testified this and I've said it in public, uh, that you could see a resurgence of terrorism coming out of that general region within 12, 24, 36 months.
You know, Congressman, we can revisit the decision that was made, and we've had a little bit of a conversation here on set this morning. You know, I think Americans were presented a false choice, stay or go, build a right. Jeffersonian democracy or get all the way out, one or the other. We had left 2,500 troops, no, no servicemen lo lives lost in 18 months. So we can ask, what should we have done in the past, but now what do we do in the future? H how do we ensure we don't end up in a place where we were on September 10th, 2001? Well, you know, and that's not just General Milley's opinion or my opinion that Al Qaeda is coming back. That's Biden's own intelligence agencies have been saying that uh, for, for the entire time uh, of his administration, that Al Qaeda and the Taliban are married at the hip. The number two of uh, the Taliban is Al Qaeda, a uh, uh, thug by the name of uh, Siraj Haqqani. Uh, so if that's your premise, that it's not a matter of if but when, uh, what is the long-term counter uh, uh, counterterrorism plan? There are pockets of resistance still fighting north of Kabul, and this administration is doing nothing to help them. So, you know, imagine we had to go back uh, after Iraq uh, when we completely pulled out of Iraq, the rise of the ISIS caliphate. We had to send our soldiers back in. Imagine if we had to do that without the Kurds, without any allies on the ground or without any bases. That's the situation our future soldiers are going to face in a year or two or three uh, if, if General Milley's predictions uh, are, are correct. So we should be, number one, supporting uh, this humanitarian corridor. We should be supporting the constitutional, democratically elected government that was just overthrown, led by Vice President Saleh. We should work with regional actors like the Indians who want to push humanitarian aid into this pocket. And this is a sanctuary for... Uh, for women, for minorities, uh, for Americans that were left behind and that are still willing to stand up and resist what is becoming a terrorist megastate, uh, armed with our weapons, right. with international legitimacy, and with, uh, and, and with billions of dollars of cor currency. We should still be resisting that because eventually that cancer is going to spread and come bite us back here at home. So you're speaking about the resistance. I've heard reports, Congressman, that the Taliban has cut off internet and technology for them. I've also, you know, heard that they're already using our weapons against them. What is the hope for that resistance? Can they actually, I mean, realistically, I think it's time we all just speak very realistically in, in terms of what's already happened. Um, is this a false hope that they can actually take over this country? Or is there something that our government can do to um, in, reinforce them? Well, it is dire. Uh, you know, I won't sugarcoat the situation. The Taliban know that this is, uh, you know, this is the final resistance, and that if they take this area and this group in the Panjshir, uh, that they will have complete and total domination. And they are they are launching an all-out assault before uh, before they can generate any international support. But you know, Biden has to make a decision: Is he going to support the rule of law, a democratically developed constitution? and an elected leadership that stood in fight that did not flee? Or is he going to go down this disastrous, slippery slope of trying to cooperate with a terrorist regime? What is he doing because now, again, God, as Biden's own administration has said, the Taliban equals al-Qaeda. What is he uh, doing now? They all aim to attack the West and wage jihad on the West. What is he doing now, Congressman? Because I'm, I'm, I'm a little confused. Uh, he says that the Afghan government is our friend, right? But the Taliban, he's getting the order from the Taliban. So who does the United States recognize as the legitimate government of Afghanistan? Well, they should recognize uh, Vice President Saleh, uh, uh, Mr. Massoud, the, the, the resistance that is still fighting the Taliban and still resist and establishing a humanitarian corridor uh, to, to get aid to these people. Uh, they, they are still under the Afghan constitution, uh, the elected leadership. We cannot support a military coup, a violent takeover, uh, and walk away from the rule of law and walk away from a constitution that we help them develop. What message does that send around the world? What message does that send for democracy? Because I can tell you, I have an ambassador after ambassador from the Middle East telling me right now, the message is jihad is won, democracy is lost, their recruiting is through the roof. And I had one ambassador ask me, who would sign up for Team USA right now uh, yeah. with how you've treated your yeah, allies that have yeah. stood and fought 
uh, for your way of life and for your values for the last 20 years. This is a betrayal of the worst kind, uh, and it's abandoning uh, it, it, it's abandoning a group of people who stood for what America stands for, and that is going to be damaging for our national security for years and years to come. Congressman Michael Waltz, appreciate you joining us this morning and giving us that insight. Thank you, Congressman. Thanks, Congressman. All right. Thank you.